company here. Mm -hmm. And you have not been talking that much about the history then, Rob, or? No. What, 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 what kind of the, this plane? So this the name of this plane is model. B-17. B-17. B-17, 17. B 17. B 17, one mm. seven. Mm. So um, this company was founded in 1937, just before the World War II. Uh, and the geopolitical situation at that time was sort of a bit similar to the situation we have today. Mm. So we, everyone knew in Europe that it would be, you know, the war would come. So mm. Sweden wanted to have aircraft, fighter aircraft, but couldn't import anything from abroad because oh. all the countries, UK, France, everyone, they wanted to have their own fighter jets on their own. Mm. So basically the Swedish politicians came to the industry and said, you need to start building fighter jets, modern fighter jets in Sweden. So the politicians came to the industry and said, you need to start producing fighter aircraft. Mm. Uh, and that was when the sort of the modern Saab was founded in 1937. Mm. And manufacturing and producing oh. cars. So that we started with uh, directly after the World War II. Mm. Because we had so much engineers, we had so many factories. And they weren't producing all of these weapons. and and fight the jets anymore. Oh, we so that was, so that yeah. start from the car. So that, that was <laughs> yeah. because we, we knew a lot, starting with the, with the fighter aircraft, uh -huh. we knew a lot about aeronautics, about engineering, about mm. engines, and we could take that knowledge into the, to the car sector. Mm. What happened then was that, as you know, the Cold War broke out mm. in, in, uh, in this part of the world. And Sweden and many other countries uh, understood that they need more fighter aircraft, they need more defense equipment, they need more uh, weapons mm -hmm. to protect Sweden and protect the, the Swedish borders. Mm. Because it was a very hostile environment with Cold War, with you know Soviet Union and, and, and the NATO mm. countries. So we actually continued uh, producing fighter aircraft. Uh, and, and continued producing all this defense material. Mm. Sweden had a huge air force during the 50s. We had thousands of these planes in Sweden, thousand planes. So Sweden had one of the largest military aircraft uh, forces in the world, actually. And it was because of the hostile situation. We have Soviet Union very, very close to us. And, and in a cold war with the NATO countries, mm -hmm. very close to us. So we wanted to build our own uh, strong defense and, and uh, capabilities. So we started uh, producing, continued uh, producing the fighter aircraft. So this is the Tunna. Tunna. It was replaced by... Why, why, we, why you call Tunna? What is the meaning? Tunna, the barrel. In English, oh, oh, it looks barrel. Like a barrel. Oh, yes, 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 it looks yes. Like a flying barrel. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and it was followed by lansen. Uh huh. Lansen. A spear. Spear. Ah. Uh, oh. uh, also very modern, very unique at the time during the six, uh, uh. sixties. It was replaced by. Draken, the dragon. Draken, oh, yeah. Also a very, very advanced fighter aircraft uh -huh. during the 60s and the 70s. That was replaced by Viggen. Mm. Also one of the absolutely the most modern fighter jets during mm. the 70s and the 80s. Um, and all these fighter aircraft has been developed, manufactured, produced by Saab. Mm. And Sweden has, has been the main customer for all this. So this is the home market for us. Sweden is, is our home base. So uh, all these aircraft have been in the Swedish Air Force. Mm. But some of them has also been on export. Mm -hmm. So for instance, Draken was used in Air Force. 
just uh, to, to give you an example. And Finland. Finland as well. Finland, Denmark, Austria, for instance. So it's, it, that was an export. After Viggen, mm. uh, Sweden decided to start developing a next generation fighter jet. And that was the Griffin. Mm. Um, it's a third generation or fourth generation fighter. I, normally, I think we don't really talk about generations in that case. <laughs> oh, not I yet. Maybe Rob knows uh, more how to mm. how to define those aircraft in in the generations. Mm. Um, this round about the time of Gripen. This is where the generation thing stopped being relevant. Mm. If you look at the older aircraft, mm. the generations were defined very much by the performance characteristics of the aircraft. Oh, yes. So, uh, J-29, ah. swept wing, but subsonic, no radar. Oh. Lanson, more advanced, more power, uh, more sophisticated design, radar all weather capable higher performance mm. draken mach 2 very complex aerodynamic mm. layout with the double delta wings very distinctive design very swedish mm. to pursue complex clever aerodynamic design again uh, all weather radars the beginning of of sensor fusion and advanced avionics data links the first data links in service on this aircraft in sweden nearly 50 years more than 50 years ago mm. and then vegan oh. even more complex aerodynamic layout more power more systems start of the multi-role mm. but also the introduction of a lot more computing power and then the aircraft start to be defined by the computing system on board mm. it's not about the the are the wings swept is it supersonic those were the generational things mm. the, and when you get into the 90s the generations kind of they, they stop meaning anything because the capability of the aircraft now is totally defined by computers and software like, like mm. now people oh. talk a lot about fifth gen and that's fifth. a marketing slogan it's a meaningless marketing slogan what uh. we mean is that that's a stealthy aircraft uh, and yes. that is now sold as a big thing uh, that sets them apart and, and it does stealth is a is an interesting mm. and useful technology but mm. it also puts incredible limits on the aircraft mm. because it's defined by the physical shape mm. So it constrains your weapons, your sensors, your communications, your performance, all kinds of things that are really mm. important. And everybody goes, you know, fifth gen, fifth gen, uh, like it is uh, solving all your problems. It's actually creating a lot more problems. Mm. And we look at that as a very limited way of defining capability. So as Matthias said, we, we we and everybody else to be honest has gone beyond generations mm. people now are talking about the sixth gen uh. nobody knows what that means uh. <laughs> there's no defining characteristic of the sixth gen it's just the next thing mm. uh, and our head of the Gripen program uh, mr sagatoft who is an extremely smart and clever guy when it comes to future air power systems he says very clearly that in software, there's no such thing as generations, there's only speed. Mm. More speed, more power, more capability. And when you're doing software-driven mm. aircraft, mm. Uh, this generation thing, it's, this is too slow. We can't move in these big, slow steps. We've got to be fast, fast, fast mm. with software. And it's all about speed and capability. Mm. Okay, I see. So that's, that's where we are. <laughs> So we ah. have been producing submarines, submarines. Mm. Uh, for more many, than many, many years. More than 100 years. More than 100 oh. years. Produced submarines for Swedish uh, Navy mm. and also some export. And this is then done in the southern part of Sweden, in Kastrina, mm. where we have a 
shipyard. And, Nine, uh, 1924. Mm. So this is, you know, th these are old pictures. Mm. But today we are also producing uh, world class, mm. very advanced submarines. This is the area uh, that you talked about. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's based on a Saab civil aircraft mm. because we were not only producing uh, military aircraft, uh -huh. we were also producing civil aircraft. Ah, civil aircraft, um, yes. And we're not doing that anymore. Um, but the, the area I was then uh, built on a Saab civil aircraft with the antennas, with the, the radars and the sensor solutions mm. That's enough for history for them at the moment, or do you want to say yeah. something more? I think I highlighted more on the fighter aircraft side. We, we can talk more about other parts as well. Maybe this is, this is quite cool. This is the, this in, in the older, in the older airplanes, uh. the propeller, was in the front mm. of the aircraft. But we developed a new aircraft where we had the propeller here in mm. the back. So back in the days mm. when a pilot had mm. to leave the plane, escape the plane because of some reason, basically what they did was that they took away the window here and they jumped out. Ah. That was the way to escape. Ah. There was no ejection seat. At that mm. With this one, mm. when, when we had the propeller in the back, if he was climbing out ah. uh, from the cockpit, that's not a good idea because he would be dragged into the propeller. Oh, uh, right? yes. So we invented the ejection seat so he could just. Oh, up. Jump up here oh. with, a, with a parachute. Oh. So this was one of the, the that was uh, one of the inventions. So this, the company here, we have a lot of these kind of inventions uh, that mm. we have developed mm. uh, through the years. So that's uh, proud of it. And I think it's important to, to talk about our heritage because without the heritage, mm. without the history, this. this is a motto or the, the quote? Yes. Quote? Yeah. Quote of who, who say it? <laughs> we make people safe. make people safe by pushing, pushing intellectual, intellectual and technology, uh, technological boundaries. We can we, we call, call it our, our thinking ish. This, this is the ish. This is the ish. Because everyone sees something different. Something different. So this is the so-called ground. Uh, is this is a, a, a you know a more modern version, uh -huh. uh, a more advanced version than the Ari. Uh -huh. The Ari is built on a Saab civil aircraft. The Globe Lie is built on a Mitsui three bom Mitsui. Bombardier. Bombardier. Jet. Oh. Um, so basically, we we buy uh, the Bombardier jets from Bombardier, mm. and we totally rip them apart. We mm. take everything out, and then we put everything new uh, mm. into the to, to the aircraft. And we have this antenna, uh, on, antenna. on the uh, on the uh, above the plane, and you have different different sensors uh, mm. around the aircraft as well. Mm. Um, and with this one, you can see with a, with a traditional radar, mm. traditional radar like this ah. one, you can only see uh, um, uh, as long as the Earth, as as you can see from from the Earth. But then, as you know, the the, the Earth is round, ah. so a radar cannot see what is behind. Ah, the, curve the, the curve of the earth. Of ah, the earth. Ah, but With this one, you go up very high up in the air, ah. and you can detect what is uh, mm. behind the curve mm. of, of the earth. Mm. So it, it it can it can detect airplanes. It can detect helicopters. Mm. It can detect drones. Mm. Uh, 
on a very very long distance uh, several kilo, uh, several miles several uh, mm. kilometers um, so it has a very very long distance uh, it can also detect directly what you have underneath yourself uh -huh. so if you are uh, with, with these sensors you can see is there a submarine there mm. is there a boat is there a ship uh -huh. is there a um, or is there a truck a car mm. so it can see you know basically it can see everything mm. uh, and this is extremely important because then with this aircraft Mm. you would know if there is an incoming missile coming mm. you know and and you will you will have that information early and you can have that early information as early so you can uh, uh, hide mm. and, and and move around your uh, military mm. equipment that you have so these are customers at the moment and we we see a huge interest on the market so uh -huh. a lot of a lot of uh, countries are interesting. Two countries uh, for uh, the robot eye has a, is a UAE is and Sweden. Sweden. But oh. Sweden, we we are producing for Sweden. They don't operate the global eye, mm. so we are producing it for Sweden at the mm. moment. But we see a, a, a huge interest mm. uh, in in the market mm. for for this system. So we have several camp campaigns ongoing. That is, uh, so that they see what kind of, of uh, seven. T7. It's a, it's a training aircraft. Uh, <laughs> that we, uh, currently we have a contract with the, uh, um, uh, the US Air Force. This is done in collaboration between Saab and Boeing. So basically Saab is doing the, the aft ah. part. Uh, the part that is uh, behind. Uh, uh. and not the wings and uh, not the engine mm. uh, so this is a collaboration between uh. Boeing and uh, Boeing and Saab yes. yeah. and this was developed very very quickly and uh, to develop new aircraft takes a lot of time mm. testing, developing and all of that this was done in a very very short time between Saab and, and, and Boeing and we are also uh, building a factory in the US in West Lafayette mm. where we are producing uh, mm. these aircraft for, for the US, uh, mm. US Air Force this is a possibility also, of course also to other um, air forces around the world that wants to have a, a trainer jet how, how many years? So we have a car uh, currently we have a contract uh, of several hundreds to to the U.S. Air Force. Mm. I don't have the figure in in my head. I can I can mm. I can check that up. Three hundred and twenty something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Over three hundred and twenty. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yes, it's so many. So we are building a factory in in the U.S. Mm. Uh, only to produce them. So uh, so that's interesting, of course. Next time you're here. Definitely. So uh, it's of course our crown jewel. I mean, we, as you as you have seen, we have a very very broad product offering. We are producing everything from radars and sensors to anti tank weapons to submarines uh, and so on. But this is of course one of the crown jewels, and we're super proud. Uh, we are exporting Gripen to several countries, including Thailand. Mm. Uh, the latest version, the Gripen E, is for Sweden and Brazil. Currently, we have many ongoing campaigns to other countries. If Gripen E F, this is E uh, F. The, yeah. uh, so the, Brazil and Sweden. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So the, the E is the single seater. The F is the two seater. Uh. And Brazil is buying E and F, but mm. Sweden is only buying E. Sixty E's oh. for Sweden at the moment. Mm. So if Thailand buy the new batch of Gripen, we will start, we will see the, the flag. flag. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Yes, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, 